Jim Collins and Jerry I. Porras' book, Built to Last, is a groundbreaking study that examines 18 successful and long-lasting companies to uncover the secrets to their enduring success. Through six years of research, the authors identified the fundamental principles and practices that set these companies apart from their competitors. The book is designed for all levels of organizations, from CEOs to regular employees, and from established Fortune 500 companies to startups and charitable foundations. The timeless advice found in this book provides readers with insight into the importance of adhering to a core ideology while relentlessly stimulating progress. The companies examined in the book, including Boeing, Johnson & Johnson, Motorola, Disney, Walmart, and Sony, have all survived multiple crises and continued to thrive in their respective industries. The author's research reveals that these companies share common characteristics, such as a clear and defined core ideology, a commitment to innovation, and a willingness to change and adapt over time. Built to Last provides readers with practical guidance on how to build and sustain a successful business, emphasizing the importance of creating a strong company culture and aligning with core values. The book challenges leaders to think beyond short-term gains and focus on long-term strategies that can ensure the success of their companies for decades to come. Overall, Built to Last is a valuable resource for anyone seeking to understand the keys to enduring success in business. Its insightful analysis and practical advice provide a roadmap for creating a lasting legacy in the world of business. Idea 1. The Best of the Best When we think of successful companies, we often attribute their success to charismatic leaders. However, a book called, Built to Last, challenges this notion by exploring the characteristics of visionary companies, which the authors define as, premier institutions in their industries having a long track record of making a significant impact on the world about them. The authors of Built to Last conducted extensive research by surveying CEOs and examining companies founded before 1950. They selected 18 visionary companies and compared them to similar organizations that didn't achieve the same level of success. By studying these companies and looking for specific patterns, the authors aim to identify the traits that contribute to long-term success. The researchers discovered that visionary companies have a strong sense of purpose beyond just making money. They also have a commitment to preserving their core values and a willingness to adapt to changing circumstances. Additionally, these companies tend to be more focused on building a lasting legacy than on short-term gains. One of the most interesting findings of the research is that visionary companies tend to be more innovative than their counterparts. They invest heavily in research and development, and are willing to take risks to develop new products or services. They also tend to be more employee-focused, recognizing that their people are their most valuable asset. Idea 2. Building Clocks, Not Just Telling Time In their book, Built to Last, authors Jim Collins and Jerry Porras differentiate between successful companies and visionary companies by using the analogies of time-telling and clock-building. A time-teller is like a charismatic leader who can make a significant impact on a company. They can tell the right time by looking at the sun or stars, but their success is tied to their personal influence. On the other hand, a clock builder is a leader who creates a long-lasting impact that lasts beyond their personal influence. They build a company for the sake of the company, rather than just focusing on short-term success in the market. One of the defining characteristics of visionary companies is their ability to accept two seemingly contradictory ideas at the same time. Instead of falling into the trap of the tyranny of the OR, they embrace the yin and yang of different ideas. For example, they can balance conservatism with risky moves, a high purpose with a pursuit of profit, and other seemingly incompatible ideas. This ability to keep things distinctly white and black at the same time is what sets visionary companies apart. They are not satisfied with just telling time. They want to build a clock that will keep ticking long after they are gone. By understanding the difference between time telling and clock building, we can learn valuable lessons about how to build organizations that are truly built to last. Idea 3. The Ideological Nature of Visionary Companies while profitability is a necessary condition for existence and a means to more important ends, it is not the end in itself for many visionary companies. They understand that profit is like oxygen, food, water, and blood for the body. 
necessary for survival, but not the point of life. The authors of Built to Last, Jim Collins and Jerry Porras, call the ideological nature of visionary companies pragmatic idealism. It means that while pursuing profits, these companies still pursue higher ideals. They reject the notion of the tyranny of the OR and embrace the yin and yang of different ideas. Merck, a pharmaceutical company, is an excellent example of pragmatic idealism in action. While pursuing profitability, they also prioritize their higher ideal of victory against disease and help to humankind. They created a cure for river blindness, a disease affecting many people in sub-Saharan Africa, and gave it away for free to those who needed it, despite the lack of customers or government support. There is no right or wrong ideology for visionary companies. Some choose customers as the center of their ideology, while others choose their product, innovation, risk-taking, or something else. However, all visionary companies have a core ideology, which is the combination of core values and purpose that guides their actions. In conclusion, the pragmatic idealism of visionary companies allows them to pursue both profits and higher ideals simultaneously. They understand that profit is necessary for survival, but it is not the end goal. By embracing a core ideology, visionary companies can stay true to their principles while still achieving long-term success. Idea 4. Preserving core and striving for change. The absence of the tyranny of the or in visionary companies allows them to seek both their core ideology and progress. These organizations strive for improvement, even if what they do works perfectly well. Core ideology consists of the company's main guiding principles, values, and purpose, which never change. However, progress is essential to a visionary company. To achieve progress, companies need self-confidence and self-criticism. Self-confidence allows a company to set ambitious goals and make bold decisions, while self-criticism motivates improvement before the external environment demands it. While core ideology provides stability, the drive for progress motivates change that aligns with the ideology. This concept of preserving core and striving for change is the key concept of the book. Companies that balance both core ideology and progress are more likely to become visionary companies that have a significant impact on their industries and the world around them. Idea 5. BHAG's Big, Hairy, Audacious Goals BHAG's are not your average goals. They are huge challenges that stimulate progress, excite people, and create momentum. A BHAG is a powerful way to encourage a company to strive for more, to push past their limits, and to achieve greatness. Henry Ford set a BHAG for his company in 1907, to democratize automobiles by building a motor car that would be affordable to everybody. This ambitious goal drove his team to work hard, and Ford became the leader in the industry. However, a BHAG only helps an organization as long as it has not been achieved. Once Ford achieved its goal, it did not set a new one, and General Motors overtook them. To create an effective BHAG, it must be clear, take you out of your comfort zone, and have follow-on BHAGs to prevent the we've arrived syndrome. BHAGs should also align with the company's core ideology of preserving core values and stimulating progress. Sony, for example, preserved its core by elevating Japanese culture and being a pioneer while stimulating progress by creating a pocketable transistor radio. BHAGs are a way for visionary companies to set a bold, inspiring goal that drives them forward and sets them apart from their competitors. Idea 6. The Demands of Working for Visionary Companies Working for visionary companies can be demanding as these companies require their employees to fit in, perform to high standards, and adhere to their ideology. This is because visionary companies know who they are and what they want to achieve, and they seek employees who can meet their requirements. These companies have been described as cult-like because they exhibit four characteristics, fervently held ideology, indoctrination, tightness of fit, and elitism. Nordstrom is an example of a company that promotes only employees who reflect their ideology and impose tightness of fit. Those who fit in receive recognition, while those who do not face penalties. Working for Nordstrom is portrayed as being special and elite, as belonging to something great. Procter & Gamble, on the other hand, 
exhibits indoctrination through formal and informal training and socialization with colleagues who teach the company's values and practices. This creates a deep sense of immersion, especially for employees who live in a P&G dominated town. Joining visionary companies can be compared to joining an extremely tight knit group or society. Employees who are willing to dedicate themselves to the company and its values will likely be satisfied and productive, while those who do not fit in will flounder and feel out of place. This is not the cult of personality, but the cult of the organization. Idea 7. The importance of experimentation and opportunism in visionary companies. Visionary companies have a unique approach to progress, which involves both BHAG, big hairy audacious goals, progress and evolutionary progress. While BHAG progress requires detailed strategic planning, evolutionary progress is more experimental and opportunistic. Evolutionary progress in visionary companies happens through small steps and seizing unexpected opportunities. To stimulate this progress, visionary companies follow five key rules. They give it a try quickly, accept that mistakes will be made, take small steps, give people the room they need, and develop mechanisms to support experimentation and opportunism. It's crucial to keep an open mind and try new things, as even small opportunities can lead to significant results. For example, Marriott restaurants became even more profitable after they seized an unexpected opportunity to deliver lunchboxes to passengers at the airport. However, it's essential to ensure that evolutionary progress aligns with the company's core ideology. Otherwise, it can lead to the wrong moves. In summary, visionary companies recognize the value of experimentation, trial and error, opportunism, and even accidents in achieving evolutionary progress. By following the five rules for decision-making and seizing opportunities, they can stay true to their core ideology while continuously evolving and improving. Idea 8. Planning for succession for visionary companies, success is not just about performing well in the current generation but also about ensuring continuity in good leadership for future generations. To achieve this, these companies plan for succession and promote from within. While the CEOs of visionary companies may appear humble, they are far from being mediocre or random. These individuals are typically family members or insiders who have been groomed and promoted based on their ability to preserve the company's core values and ideology. One example of the importance of succession planning is Colgate, which was founded in 1806 and had a strong core ideology formulated by Sidney Colgate. However, by the 1940s, the company had shrunk by twice its size and its profitability was less than one-fourth that of its competitor, Procter & Gamble, P&G. The reason for this decline was that the first four generations of top management were insiders, but then the company merged with Palmolive Pete and the new manager focused more on expansion than preserving the company's values. Even after Bayard Colgate, another family member, took over, the company was unable to catch up. In contrast, P&G had a program for management development in place as early as the 1920s, which ensured that Cooper Proctor was grooming a successor to become CEO. Today, the company continues to promote from within and has a robust mechanism for homegrown management. In conclusion, visionary companies understand the importance of planning for succession and promoting from within to ensure continuity in good leadership and preserve the company's core values and ideology. By doing so, they can sustain success across generations and remain competitive in their respective industries. Idea 9. The critical question for visionary companies, how can we improve tomorrow? Visionary companies are known for their continuous self-improvement, which is achieved through discipline and hard work. Rather than simply aiming for success, these companies strive to do better tomorrow than they did today. To drive progress, Visionary companies create discomfort through mechanisms like internal competition and the adoption of new technologies and ideas. This contrasts with comparison companies, which tend to avoid discomfort and lack discipline. If you want to create a visionary company, it's important to communicate to your employees that comfort is not an objective and to set long-term goals. Even if you're currently doing well, investing in the future is crucial for sustained success. Idea 10. Aligning elements of a company with its core ideology for visionary success. Creating a vision statement is just the first step towards becoming a visionary company. 
To achieve this status, all elements of the company must work together in alignment with its core ideology, including goals, policies, pay systems, and management behaviors. To achieve this alignment, the authors provide several guideposts. Firstly, it's important to paint the whole picture by creating a comprehensive plan that goes beyond just a big hairy audacious goal, BHAG, core ideology, or a particular strategy. Secondly, sweating the small stuff is crucial. Frontline employees who do the work that moves the company forward should understand the importance of their contributions, even if they don't work with the big picture in mind. Thirdly, mechanisms and processes in visionary companies should reinforce each other. At Merck, for example, they recruit top scientists, allowing them to publish their works and collaborate with other scientists, thus allowing for a dual career track. Fourthly, it's essential to swim in your own current, even if it means swimming against the tide. Companies should not ignore reality, but should focus on doing things that make sense for their own organization. Fifthly, misalignments that impede progress should be obliterated. These may include outdated policies, practices, or strategies that no longer serve the company's interests. Finally, while it's important to keep the universal requirements in mind, it's also crucial to invent new methods. Companies should do both. Maintain proven things that worked before while experimenting with new things that may work in the future. By following these guideposts, companies can align all elements of their organization with their core ideology and become visionary. Idea 11. The two components of a vision. A vision statement is essential to guide an organization towards its long-term goals. However, a vision statement consists of two essential components, the core ideology and the envisioned future. The core ideology includes the guiding principles that define a company's character and purpose. It encompasses core values, which differ from company to company, and the core purpose, which is the reason for the organization's existence. On the other hand, the envisioned future outlines the company's long-term goals and aspirations. It comprises a big, hairy, audacious goal, BHAG, and vivid descriptions of what the company will look like when it achieves its goal. BHAG can be quantitative, qualitative, a common enemy, a role model, or an internal transformation. Meanwhile, vivid descriptions provide a clear and compelling picture of the envisioned future, motivating employees to work towards achieving the goal. A company's vision should be aligned with its core ideology, goals, policies, pay systems, and management behaviors to achieve success. To create alignment, the organization should paint the whole picture, sweat the small stuff, cluster, don't shotgun, swim in your own current, obliterate misalignments, and keep the universal requirements while inventing new methods. The concepts of core ideology and envisioned future are not only applicable in the corporate world but also in other organizations, such as colleges, churches, governments, and families. A well-crafted vision statement provides a direction and motivation for an organization, inspiring its members to work together towards a common goal. Summary The author argues that many businesses fail because they do not plan for the future. To avoid this, a new business model is needed, one that focuses on creating a company that can stand the test of time. The key to lasting success is a balance of authenticity and innovation. Companies that remain true to their mission statement while adapting to changing times are more likely to succeed. It is also important to set clear goals and take concrete steps to achieve them. By implementing these strategies together, businesses can achieve long-term success. Now, thank you for taking the time to watch, and if you found value in this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel, and in case you want to buy the book, use the link in the description, trust me, you won't regret it.